Are you thinking about taking the EJPT exam from eLearn Security? Or are you studying for it right now and you're wondering, what is that exam gonna be like? Well, I've recently had a chance to take and pass that exam. I wanna give you some pointers from my experience. So after passing my EJPT exam, I did receive a lot of questions from random people on the interwebs about what that exam experience was like. They had heard about uh, certain aspects of the exam and there was a few questions that kept popping up, some very uh, specific questions. And I thought maybe this would be a good spot for us to maybe go over those and clarify some of the things that are gonna happen when you take your EJPT exam. Let's start with question number one that I got quite a bit, which was, what were the questions like on the exam? Now you might be thinking to yourself, I thought this was a practical hands-on hacking type exam. It absolutely is that. It is, and it's tons of fun, by the way. I had a, had a great time doing it. But the EJPT exam, what they do is they ask you questions about the exam environment and only someone who was successful in uh, moving about said environment would be able to answer those questions. So that was, that was really uh, how, how they ask you questions. That's, that's kind of the important part. Now, let me take some time to say this, because I always wanted to follow up with this, is the questions in this exam are what made this exam really fun for me. You're like, wait, hold on, did you say fun? Exams aren't fun, exams are hard, they're stressful. They, they make you sweat and worry that you're gonna waste money or something. No, 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 this was actually quite an enjoyable experience because it was kind of like a digital scavenger hunt for hackers. Now, when I say that, don't hear me say that this was a CTF in any way, shape, or form. Absolutely not that. There were no weird logic puzzles, no odd steganography um, things to, to solve. It wasn't like that. It was like a real live penetration test. I had an environment. I did normal penetration testing things. There was no capture the flag business to this whatsoever. Very straightforward. And I was able to answer those questions that they asked me because of that. It wasn't about that. But man, was it sure fun trying to find all the artifacts, trying to answer those questions that they were giving me. So I really enjoyed that aspect of this exam. And that's hopefully clears up what that's going to be like as far as the questions go and the exam environment. All right, let's move on to question two was the time. Now, eLearn Security gives you 72 hours to complete the exam. That's... That's a lot of time. If you're familiar with other hands-on based examinations in the uh, hands-on hacking realm of things, you might have heard some horror stories about time being of the essence. You must manage your time very, very well. With the EJPT, I felt more like they gave me an abundance of time. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't people out there that would not need the, the full 72 hours, and that's fine, right? If you need the full 72, it's there for you. I think what eLearn Security is trying to do with 72 hours is give you enough time to remove time as a, a stressor. They want you to just go in and take the exam. Now, if you're, if you're struggling or, or if things are, are a little tough, don't worry about it, right? You, you have plenty of time to answer all the questions on the exam. You can even take long breaks, have yourself a nice meal, take, get away from the computer for a minute, maybe rethink some things you're having trouble with and come back to it without worrying about losing a ton of time. I think it took me a grand total of five hours to be to, to have enough points to, to pass the exam. I knew for a fact, I have enough points to pass this exam. And then I was like, well, these questions are kind of fun. So I just kept going anyway. And I spent another hour, hour and a half, just kind of finding some other things and going, oh yes, there, there it is. Some, some stones I had yet to unturn. So it was, it was so much fun because of the questions that I continued in the exam because I had plenty of time to do so. And it was a lot of fun. So I was enjoying myself. I didn't really want the experience to be over at that point. So time management in this exam, if you know the material, if you've been through the course, you've studied, you feel comfortable with the material, you shouldn't have much trouble time-wise in the exam, in my opinion. Now, of course, your mileage may vary. Everyone's different. It doesn't make you bad at doing the job or anything of that nature. You don't want to downplay anybody's skills or abilities. Some people take longer than others, and that's completely fine. But I think that my, my impression is that eLearn Security is trying to give you plenty of time to go in, take your exam, do the things you need to do, and be successful. So that's great. All right, the last and final question that I typically was seeing was programming. If you've taken the PTS course, the uh, Penetration Testing Student course from eLearn Security, there is a programming section 
in the course. And so a, a lot of people were asking me how much programming was in the exam itself. How much, how many questions about programming are there gonna be? How, uh, is the programming section hard? What does it look like in the exam? So this is an interesting question and one I wanted to make sure because it can be a little, a little murky as far as understanding. I, I get where people are coming from, their perspective. They think because there's a section on programming that there will necessarily be something that they need to know about programming to be successful in the exam. Let's see if we can clarify that up. You need absolutely no programming experience to take and be successful in the EJPT exam. That being said, I used programming a lot. Now, what do you mean? If, there, if I don't need it at all, why were you using so much of it? That's a, that's a valid question, I would say. The reason that I say I used it a lot was because I created my own tools. eLearn Security is not constrictive on what you can and cannot do inside the exam experience, other than, you know, obviously, like some form of cheating. But if you want to use a tool that you find on GitHub or roll your own, bake your own, right? Make, make one of your own which is exactly what I did. I created a tool for myself that made the uh, reconnaissance and enumeration part of my uh, pen testing process automated and made it easier. So I don't forget things, I don't go around rabbit holes and then forget to do things. So I created my own stuff. So I did a lot of my own programming. And of course, any programming you know can be helpful for you when you find different and certain technologies. But it's not absolutely necessary. But that doesn't mean you won't use it or couldn't use it. So it's an important piece of the puzzle and I'm really glad that eLearn Security put the, the programming section in their courseware and start to push that because it is a helpful skill for people that are getting into penetration testing, ethical hacking. So that being said, hopefully that clears things up for you on what you can expect if you are looking to take the EJPT exam.